joining me on a quilting tale today. My name is Shaylin and today I'm going to show you how I put together a quilt called Halloween Roses. This is a pattern by Fig Tree and Company and if you look at it closely you can see that it does look like a Halloween quilt with lots of orange and black in there. Even though it says Halloween the version I'm making will not be. It's a gift for my sister who likes neutral colors which is Kind of different from what I normally use. Um, I usually put some bright colors in throughout the quilt as well so I'm eager to try something different and see how an all neutral quilt turns out. But I think this will be a great pattern for it and there are lots of different points in here that get matched up and also that you don't want to cut off so I will share tips as I'm putting it together for how I make sure the points stay intact and connect where they're supposed to so let's go ahead and get started we'll begin with fabric selection my sister really likes neutral colors so I chose basic gray by Moda fabrics boudoir as the fabrics for this quilt and if you look at the pattern, the Halloween roses, there's that pop of orange all throughout, which this one won't have. So I'm just going to be really intentional when I build the blocks about getting contrasting colors in here. So a lot of these dark ones with the lighter creams in here, but there's a lot of gray. And instead of solid black, I'm gonna be using these almost solid black uh, tonal black prints here so I have them all labeled before I cut it up so I know which parts of the block all of these pieces are designated for. So now I'm just ironing my fabrics flat to prepare for cutting. I start by trimming off the selvage with a little of the print still attached, which I can use for labels or tying the quilt for gifting. I've made videos to show how I do both those things, which I'll link in the description box below. After I score up my fabric, I'll cut it into strips, followed by pieces. The sizes are all in the pattern. To cut multiple strips into pieces at once, I stagger the strips, lining up their long edges to the horizontal lines of my ruler. I put a couple strips together as I stagger them. pieces are pressed and cut, it's time to start making blocks. I've got each of the 16 blocks laid out, each on a piece of cardstock so I can just lift it and take it over to the machine. And the reason you want to lay it out ahead of time is to make sure you have enough of these outer pieces here. So you can match the center to these smaller squares or you might mix it um, where you have a different center and then these smaller ones are a contrasting fabric. But for these outer corners, you want matching smaller squares for those. So you wanna make sure you have enough of those. That's why it's a good idea to lay it out. And you also might wanna just watch that you don't have too many of the same prints, even if they're different colors in the same block. So just things to consider. Each block, will get the F, I, and H pieces. So I didn't mix those in yet. But now that I have them all laid out and I know that there's enough of each print for each block, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. 
A new project calls for a fresh needle. Alright, the first step of this block is going to be making the square in a square unit. So I'm going to take my main center fabric and four of the smaller ivory or cream squares. And I'm going to go ahead and make this unit. Remember, I do have a video that I made earlier that has tips for making square and a square units, which I will link below. Before you cut, just test out uh, that when you fold them down, they match up with the corners, which these do. This pattern recommends that if you have a colored fabric on top, that you just cut the middle piece out and leave the bottom piece of fabric for um, more stability. But since I have a lighter fabric on top, I'm going to cut. Uh, both pieces off, leaving a quarter inch away from the seam. And then I'll press those seams open before attaching the other two corners. Remember this is cut along the bias, so just run your iron parallel uh, to the line here, this diagonal. Don't rub it back and forth because you could stretch it. to size to get it all squared up um, by starting a quarter inch away from the point will kind of be my guide for where to make my first cuts. So I'm going to just set this aside for now and move on to the next step. For this one, I'm going to take my four main uh, star corner prints. And this is going to be the main print of this block. And then I'm going to attach one of the small cream uh, squares to a corner. So again, we'll just chain stitch. Worth mentioning again, I've said this in other videos, but if you don't draw a diagonal line from corner to corner, um, you can use a piece of tape. I have the washi tape here to line my points up at. So it's lined up with the needle, um, and I just make sure that the bottom point is lined up with the tape, and I just follow it as a guide. Anytime we use the stitch and flip or sew and flip method, remember we want to just fold our corner down and make sure that it aligns with our corner, that we're not coming up short. Is that good? So again, we're going to cut a quarter inch away from the seam, cut through both pieces. 
And I'll go ahead and press these seams open as well. So you can square it up if you need to. One side should already be square from cutting it, so you can just align your pieces. For this step we're going to make half square triangles out of our main star print and the uh, cream triangles so you want right sides together if you um, are able to tell the difference. My um, brown fabric here I can so I want to make sure that that's facing inside. And I'm just going to chain stitch these. Um, align the edges and chain stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. Just be careful not to pull on these as they're going um, under the needle or as you're putting them together because it is a bias cut there and it will stretch. So just remember to watch for that. to press the seams open. First I'm just gonna uh, press down on them to set the seams with a little bit of heat. Then we'll press the seams open and trim them to the pattern specifications. Remember to just run it parallel across the stitch line so you don't stretch those bias edges. And in case you're wondering, I'm just using a new water mister that I got. I've been using it in place of the steam setting and spray setting on my iron. I find that I don't have to refill this nearly as often as the iron and it's been working really well for getting the fabric really flat. So, um, so far I'm really enjoying it. So when I trim down a half square triangle, I like to start in the bottom left corner um, and line up the diagonal line with of my ruler with a diagonal line of the half square triangle and just make sure that my marks that I'm trimming to um, have fabric under them on both sides that there's not a missing fabric um, so just make sure that they're lined up and the diagonal lines are matched up and you can make your first cut And then just spin it so that the remaining dog ears are in the upper right corner and line up those diagonals again. This time it's easier because you have straight lines that you can align right on your ruler uh, to the size you're trimming to. And just cut those off. There we go. Oops, I missed a tiny piece there. There we go. All right, so just like the other pieces, we're going to set them aside for now and move on to step four. You'll need three different pieces for this one. Um, and you will want to pay attention if you have directional print for this. Just be aware of um, where it's pointing because um, you're going to have a top, bottom, right, and left piece. So you also want to keep straight which pieces are the star points that are on the inside and then you should also have the pieces that match the outer star the larger star piece um, and again that's going to match the main fabric so mine for this block is the brown fabric so what you're going to do on this one for each of these larger 
rectangles and you might chain piece these as well is um, just start with one corner um, and again if it's directional you need to pay attention to um, how it's going to be oriented will it be the top of the block the right side the bottom or the left side so my darker fabric here is directional and um, I want it to show kind of vertically up and down so I'll make sure that two of mine are pointing up and down and two are pointing sideways because when I um, put them up and down um, they'll look that way or when I put them sideways they'll appear um, to still be going up and down so um, the first two it doesn't really matter but the next two I need to make sure I'm I've rotated it 90 degrees let me just show you from um, my perspective here so if I have this up in the corner and I just flip it down I can see that the piece is going to run up and down this way. So this will actually be a side piece for me because I want these to run up and down. If I flip it 90 degrees and fold it over, this will be a top or bottom piece because the print um, is running up and down that way. So just watch when you flip it, you can get a little peek of um, its orientation after you do the stitch and flip method. Okay, so before we cut anything, just double check again that when you flip them, uh, the points match, oops, the points match up and check the orientation. So this one is going up and down do another one the points line up this one is also going up and down so these ones should be going side to side if I did this correctly I'll flip it and yes I can see it's going side to side this time that one I think I can make it line up um, and then this one is also going side to side. So these ones that look side to side um, will be my top and bottom star points because I want everything to look like it's running vertically up and down. Remember I mentioned that the pattern says um, if you have a darker fabric on top when you're doing stitch and flip, to just cut the darker middle portion away and leave the lighter piece for stability. Um, so I'll be doing that here. So I'm just cutting the black off and I can see um, I still have the cream fabric underneath. And that helps me to, when it's getting pressed, um, I can see that it, the whole shape of the rectangle. So Again, we'll just cut, and when you have smaller pieces like this, if you can get all of the scissors, uh, the length of the scissors to show on the other side, that helps you have a nice straight cut. This makes for easy pressing. There's no pressing open, you just press the black fabric down on the cream. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and do the black corner of the other side. Alright, now we're going to follow the exact same steps on the opposite side of this unit, only this time we're using the main star uh, fabric. Um, mine is not directional so I won't have to pay attention but just keep that in mind. Um, how you want it oriented if you do have directional fabric. I'm going to go ahead and just finish up these four units with the remaining eight squares. Here I am squaring up the finished pieces. I was making sure I had a quarter inch above my top and bottom center points. Later on, because the whole base layer was still intact, I turned the block over and trimmed along the original rectangular piece. 
That was an even quicker method. All right, so now we're going to assemble the four corner units. You're going to start with one of your main uh, corner prints. Mine is the brown one. There's the cream corner in the bottom right corner. You'll take one of your half square triangles and you'll put it in the upper right corner um, so that the two main prints are touching. And then you'll have two cream squares next to it. All right, I had to swap out a battery there. All right, and then for the side, we're going to have one more cream square followed by a half square triangle on the bottom left. And again, the main fabric should be touching. So the way I'm gonna sew this is um, these three pieces together, also these two squares together, and then I'll attach it to the main print here, and then I'll take these three and attach it to the top last, and I'll do that four times. If you wanted to chain piece your four corner units, you could just stack them. So I have three left to go. Just make sure they're all oriented the same way, but get your pieces all ready, and then you can keep track of the orientation as you go. So I just need... All right, before I attach the top to the main piece here, I just want to show um, because of the directions that I press the seams, they're going opposite directions. Um, they're going to nest nicely, which I always like to make sure my seams are aligned. So I'm just gonna pin and then sew across the top. So this is how the block will be pieced together. I just have it all laid out right now. And you want to make sure if you have directional print that it's pointing the way you want it to go. So I have all the flowers pointing up and down. When I sew this, I'm going to start by connecting these two pieces, these two, and then these two. Um, and then we'll attach the third column. There are several points that you'll want to pay attention to and line up. So I'll show you some tips for how I do that as I start sewing. When these pieces are sewn together, we want the two tips to align here, and then there's this little gap in between the two points here that we want to line up with the gap on this one as well. And this one um, on the bottom here, I'm just imagining this um, point extending upward here. So I'm really going to use these two when I turn it over to try and line up. And then we want to align the seams on both sides as well. So the best way to do that is to, it's kind of hard to do this one handed, but um, look at the seams, the diagonal line on both sides and try and line them up and just pin before sewing. So that's what um, I'm going to do when I put the camera down here. Um, and then this one, because that quarter inch will be sewn in, it should just leave the tip um, of the tan fabric here showing. And then for the middle section, we're going to have the two points that need to align. So what I would do on this one is just um, align the edges first and then just hold one up and make sure the very tips are touching and aligned. And then pin and it should be pretty close to matching up. Um, we've squared all our pieces but same thing we want to make sure that the 
the middle portion that's going to be visible when pressed open is aligned and doesn't, you know, sag below or something. So let's just pin. And so this one. Looking at these closely, that one looks nice. The two tips are touching and they're centered with each other, but they're not, neither point is cut off. This one here, the one I just did on camera, the top points look nice. I did notice it kind of felt like it was chewing on it a bit. Um, going through it got a little stuck and there's a pucker here that I'm gonna take and straighten out here. Um, and then this one I, I had done earlier before I started filming and it looks like the tips are lined up nicely there. Um, now down here, it's not, um, this cream one isn't as high as the black. So I can see if I can fix it. If it's just off um, with the cutting or something, I might just leave it um, because this one is all aligned. So I'll see if I can nudge the fabric a bit all right this time i'm gonna flip and sew from this side so i can see my seam allowance here that is not getting bunched up because that's where it started chewing it and then since i'm rejoining the stitch i'm just gonna back stitch to secure it in there See if this is any better. All right, so I nudged this one up a bit more, and um, I didn't want to nudge it too much because I didn't want it to be too short. But I think it's just almost there, and I'm fine with that. And then this one, let's see. Yeah, this one, the pucker is gone there, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the third column now to these. Here's the almost finished block. There's just one step left now, adding the little black corners on all four sides. All right, this is a finished block, and I just need to make 16 of them total. I really like how it looks with these neutral colors. I wasn't sure without a pop of orange or a bright color how I'd like it, but I think it looks very beautiful. And as you can see from these little corner pieces on the sides, they're going to become this little X that connects all the sashing later on. So I'm really excited to see how that will look all put together. But I'm just gonna finish my 16 blocks and then we will talk about sashing. After I attach a sashing strip, I finger press toward the sashing. You might notice my paper pinned in the upper left corner. It reminds me that that block is on the left end of row one. I put pins in the upper right of each block just to help me remember which way to orient the block. toward the sashing strips in each row. Now I'll chain piece the pieces of the skinny sashing rows with the black centers of the X's. I made all the skinny rows at once, finger pressing away from the black squares.
my first block row pinned to my first sashing row and because I press toward the sashing the um, the seams nested nicely I started pinning at the cornerstones first and then I would work my way down and I pin so that I could have the blocks on top so I can watch those intersection points um, and make sure I don't cut any of my points off. I want to be able to see those thread intersections. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing the sashing rows with the block rows together until my top is done. The blocks are all sashed together so now it's time to add borders and then I'll take it to the quilter. Here's the finished quilt. Once again, this is called Halloween Roses by Fig Tree and Company, and it finishes at 65 and a half inches by 65 and a half inches. And I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. I honestly thought when my sister said she wanted neutrals that this might not work as well as the pattern showed with pops of orange in it but I think it's just really elegant and classy. I don't usually use a lot of neutral colors. I like pops of color, so um, this has definitely changed my mind on just going with neutrals. I just think it's gorgeous, and I'll show the up-close quilting in a moment, but really just these tans and blacks and grays, they all work really nicely together, and I think this would be a great year-round quilt. It's kind of a medium weight batting inside and um, even though it says Halloween roses in the pattern it certainly doesn't have to be Halloween colors. One of the features I really like on this quilt are the little black cornerstones between the sashing, how they connect with the black corner pieces inside each block so it ends up making these little X's that are just an extra little pop throughout the quilt. And then these two borders of different ones that just frame it really nicely and blend right into the black binding here. So I just, again, think it's really beautiful. Let's come on in up close and I'll show you the quilting job on here. Let's get a close up of the long arm edge to edge quilting on here. This was a new quilter that lives uh, about an hour and a half away and she did a great job. I had originally asked for a kind of lighter thread and she made it just slightly darker to this kind of tan color which I really like on here. It doesn't compete with anything but the quilting still stands out so it has lots of swirls and kind of floral loops and feathering in here and I think just works really well. back of the quilt. It's kind of a gray background with a smaller print and then it has the dark trim that frames it well. The quilting is very subtle on here. It's a white thread and when you back up you can hardly see it at all but a lot of it mimics the white kind of vines that are going throughout the background here. Then you can see at the very bottom I have my care label and I have the label about the quilt on the bottom corner. So you can see a video I did earlier about how I attach labels, but that is the backing. I look forward to giving my sister this quilt as a graduation present later this spring, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it come together. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe so I know to keep making more videos like this. And I'd be curious, what do you think of all neutrals in a quilt? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.